Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a geometry puzzle. Two congruent circles are inscribed in the region between two quarter circles in a unit square. Find the radius of the circles. Alright, at this point you may just pause the video and try this problem yourself first. This could be considered an easyish, easyish puzzle, not really on the hard side. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. As always, I'm going to be making some connections, right? So let's go ahead and connect the two centers here. like this okay then i would like to connect the center of the top circle and i'm going to be doing it for the bottom one as well to the center of the quarter circles there's two of them so we have some kind of symmetry right so we can actually go ahead and take advantage of symmetry here but let's go ahead and connect this as well if you want but i don't think we're going to need it are we i don't think so okay so we have now r well maybe i might just extend this a little bit right to show you where that comes from okay here we go okay so this is a point on the quarter circle of course i'm considering this one with this center the other one is similar because they're symmetrical so we know that the radius of the it's a unit square therefore the radii is also one for the quarter circles right so the radius is one which means this is one half right this part because that's a midpoint how do i know that well, uh, it's got to be a midpoint from symmetry. Maybe we should have said that, right? Well, obviously, but, well, that's the midpoint. Okay. All right. Maybe it should be stated in the problem. So what happens if we shift the circles to the left uh, a little bit? Uh, yep, they'll get smaller, and maybe that could be another discussion, right? Later on, we can talk about that. But anyways, this is going to be in the middle. Okay, cool. Now, we know that this is R. Well, that's what we're trying to find, right? At least. Uh, let's call this R, and let's call this R, and let's call this R. Beautiful. Now, we do have a right triangle, don't we? Okay, here we go. Can we use that to find R? Let's try. Well, let me go ahead and shade that first for you. So this is my right triangle. And this right triangle has a base of one half, and its height is what? R plus R plus R, therefore the height is 3R. So if I can find the hypotenuse in terms of R, if I can express it, then I'll be good to go. Is there a way to express the hypotenuse in terms of R? And the answer is yes, there is. What's that method? Let's go ahead and explore. Okay, let's take a look at this one now. So what am I going to do? I know that from this point to that point, it's going to be the radius of the quarter circle, which is 1. If I subtract R from it, then the hypotenuse is going to be 1 minus R, right? Okay. Awesome. So the hypotenuse will be 1 minus r. Beautiful. So now, what can I do with this information? Well, I can do lots of things. Let me go ahead and make this a little darker so you can see. So this distance is going to be 1 minus r, which is the hypotenuse. So now I can go ahead and write the Pythagorean theorem. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay. So now I have 1 half squared plus r plus r plus r is 3r, right, squared, and that is equal to what? 1 minus r squared. Beautiful. Okay, so let's see what we get from here. This is going to give me 1 fourth. Let's go ahead and simplify that. 1 fourth plus 9r squared is equal to 1 minus 2r plus r squared. If I go ahead and bring everything to this side, then I'll be getting 8r squared, right? And then plus 2r. And then I'm going to bring over the 1. 1 fourth minus 1 is going to be negative 3 fourths, right? Okay. So this is what I'm going to be getting. And then uh, to make stuff a little easier for ourselves, let's go ahead and multiply both sides by 4. Even though the numbers are going to get bigger, uh, we're going to get rid of the fractions. I mean, you can, you can do fine with fractions as well, but I just don't like to do it that way. So that's going to be 8r minus 3 equals 0. Obviously, when you square uh, a large number or multiply 32 by 4, you're going to get some large numbers. But don't worry, we're going to use factoring to handle this. Okay, so let's go ahead and proceed. Now, if I use the quadratic formula, it's going to give me r equals. And notice that this equation has a positive solution and a negative solution. We know that the product is negative, right? Therefore, we're not going to consider the negative because obviously that's not the answer. Okay, so r needs to be positive. Given that we have negative b, right, 
plus, which is the positive version, b squared, right, 64, minus 4ac. 4 times 32 times c is going to be negative 3, okay? Multiply those together and divide by 4 times a, which is 128, okay? So let's see what we can do from here. So we're going to need to simplify this a little bit, but what's going to be helpful in this expression is that negative 8 plus, okay, so I'm going to be getting from here 12 times 32, okay, and then all of that is going to be multiplied by 128. So let's go ahead and simplify this a little bit. Uh, how do we simplify that? Well, actually, it's not 128. It's supposed to be 64, negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4a, so over 2a. Yeah, okay, that should not be a 128. I just noticed that's supposed to be a 64. Let's go ahead and fix that. So we're dividing by 64. Okay, awesome. Now notice that here we can factor out at 32, but that's not going to be super helpful. I'd like to take out a 64, right? And we can do that because 12 times 32 is 6 times 64. If I factor out 64, it's going to look like 1 plus 6, right? Which is 7. So this expression can be written as negative 8 plus, so 64 is going to be square rooted, that's going to be 8 root 7, because we have 7 inside the radical, all over 64. Now what I can do at this point is divide everything by 8 and write it in a nicer way, so it's going to look like r equals square root of 7 minus 1 divided by 8. Okay, so that should be my solution for this problem. The radius, there's only one positive value, so that should be it. I hope this was an easy puzzle compared to the other ones. At least the solution doesn't take that long, right? But uh, in the future, you're going to see some variations of this puzzle as well. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.